no boundary, I see increase all around me, no limit, no boundaries, I see increase all around me, stretch for In love's my territory
grave. He conquered the grave. Oh, we celebrate him today. Jesus, we remember. We remember that journey. We remember, oh God, the purpose, the meaning of the cross. And we celebrate you, Jesus. We are gathered here to lift your name and say you are holy. You are holy, you are holy. And you are the true king. Take all the glory. Take all the praise in this room. Oh, we are your servants this morning. Gathered here, Lord, to worship you. To worship the only true God. Take all the glory, Lord. You've won it all. You want it all for us, Jesus. Oh, you want it all. You want it all, Jesus.
wherever you are just lift up your hands and just with your mouth just declare how awesome he has been that this weekend would have not been possible if it wasn't for what he did on the cross of Calvary just open your mouth and make that your prayer this is that song we're singing he is an awesome God because he did not look at anything upon our lives and he just looked upon you as his children that one day we will be called the sons and daughters of God. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you've done on the cross of Calvary. We stand as your children in all humbleness and we say you are our God. You are our Lord. You deserve all the glory because you are an awesome God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Make sure you walk to three people. Say happy Easter. And make sure you give them a big hug. Give them a kiss if you have to. Make sure you walk to three people. Someone you did not come to church with. Say happy Easter. As you are seated, I just want you to put your hands together as we welcome Mama Elizabeth, who's going to give us a special number this morning. Oh, come on, put your hands together for Mama Elizabeth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, this is Resurrection Sunday. Amen, amen, amen. I want to thank God for the opportunity to share with you um, this little song that I have. Amen. This morning when I was reading my Bible, Luke chapter 24 concerning the, the resurrection. I was touched by verse 1 because it said when they woke up in the morning um, to go to the tomb, they took um, the spices that they had prepared. Amen. The spices that they had prepared. This morning, I want to say to you, when you come to church, be prepared. Come prepared. Those who receive miracles from God, they come prepared. If you want to receive anything from God, you prepare yourself. It just doesn't happen, but you have got to be prepared. You prepare yourself to receive from God. It really touched my heart that these women who went to the grave, they didn't just wake up and say, let's go to the grave. Let's see what happened. No, they took time. They prepared themselves and they were ready to go and meet their Lord. And because they were so prepared, when they got there, remember, the grave had been sealed with a large stone. They found it rolled away. Amen. Because they were prepared. Amen. I'm just going to share with you, this is a common song that I want to sing, um, 10,000 Angels. Hallelujah. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior, so pure and free from sin. They said, crucify him, he is to blame. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and to set him free. Oh, 
that he died alone for you and me. Upon his precious head, they placed their crown of thorns. They laughed and said, Behold the king. They struck him and they cast him and they mocked his holy name. All alone he suffered everything. He could have called on 10,000 angels to destroy the world and to set him free. stood nearby he said woman behold thy son he cried I thirst for water but they gave him none to drink then the sinful work of men was done he could have gone to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called on 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and me. To the howling mob he yielded, Lord, for mercy cry, the cross of shame he took alone. And when he cried, it's finished, he gave himself to die. Salvation's wondrous plan was done. He could Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here? I said, are you glad to be here? Today is a Resurrection Sunday. And we want to thank God for his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just want to take this time to welcome all of you into the Resurrection Sunday. Say amen to that. Talk to me. Say amen to that. And I'm so glad that you came. Amen. I'm so glad that you did what? You came. Amen. And this morning, please rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Lift up your two hands. 
and thank God for his resurrection. The Bible says that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Why don't you lift up your voice and just love him? He's worthy. He's glorious. We worship you, oh God. We honor you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. He's risen. He's risen. He's risen. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bless your name. We honor you, Lord. We give you praise. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. He's risen. He's risen. He's risen. We worship you, Lord. We bless your name. You can. 
chapter 11. John chapter 11 we'll read from verse 25 Lord I lift your name on we are going to read it together thank you so much praise and worship team hallelujah hallelujah John 11, 25, and 26. We are going to read it together. And please read it with every fiber of your being. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, stay there. Want to go? Jesus said unto her, uh -huh. I am the resurrection uh -huh. and the life. Uh -huh. He that believeth in me, uh -huh. though he were dead, yeah. yet shall he live. Verse 26. And whosoever liveth uh -huh. and believeth in me uh -huh. shall never die. Hallelujah. Read it again from verse 25. Jesus said unto her, uh -huh. I am the resurrection uh -huh. and the life. Uh -huh. He that believeth in me, uh -huh. though he were dead, uh -huh. yet shall he live. Verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I want you to walk to five people and tell them, Jesus is alive. Walk to five people and tell them Jesus is alive. You may take your seat. has to settle I am verse 25 I am the resurrection verse 25 I am the resurrection and the life I am the resurrection and the life. There are so many lives you can live, but I am there, the life. And he says that he that believeth in me, though ye were dead, yet shall he live. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though ye were dead, you will live. And verse 22 says, uh, sorry, 26 says, but I know and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. Jesus made this statement when they came and told him that Lazarus, your friend, has died. And Bible says that Martha and Mary sent some messengers to go and tell Jesus that your friend Lazarus is dead. 
Jesus stayed for two days and told the disciples that we must go and visit Lazarus because Lazarus is asleep. I'm taking you somewhere. Lazarus is what? Asleep. And the disciple says that if Lazarus is asleep, why do we have to go and wake him up? If he's asleep, he would definitely rise or wake up. We don't have to go there. Because Jesus was speaking in parables, but the di disciples could not comprehend and apprehend what Jesus was saying. So Jesus now have to say that Lazarus is dead. So we should go and wake him up. They went to Martha and Mary's house. And immediately they got there. Martha came. I'm taking you somewhere. Martha came and said, Jesus, if you have been here earlier, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. The one that is speaking to you, I am the resurrection and the life. Because I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to pick it up again. I am the resurrection and the life. And it says all that matter you have to know is to just believe. If you believe that I am the resurrection then you will see the resurrection power of God manifests right in your very eyes. I am the resurrection. And I am the life you are looking for. And he says that even though your brother Lazarus is dead, all that I need you to do is to believe in your brother rise again. I'm here to suggest to someone the situation that you are going through might seem so dead. There is no hope. There is no future. There is no destiny. But God is telling somebody here all that I needed to do for the miracle to manifest is to believe. Because when you believe, all things are possible. Your belief system gives Jesus the warrant to come into the situation and bring the total recovery in whatever you are going through. All that is asking us this morning that no matter what you are going through, just believe that with God all things are possible and the impossibilities in your life becomes possible. Jesus said, go and show me where you laid Lazarus. Jesus stayed for four days because Jesus want to prove to the people around that when I step into a situation, it doesn't matter how stinking the situation is. I have the power to direct the course of that situation that the situation doesn't have any choice than to respond to your need. Who am I speaking to? Jesus has specialized in sticking situations. 
He said, show me where you laid Lazarus. Watch this. I don't have time. I want to go ahead of myself because of time. Watch this. Lazarus is a type of Jesus. Lazarus is a type of Jesus. When Lazarus died, he was put in a tomb and a stone was placed in front of the tomb. I'm taking you somewhere. When Jesus came into the scene, the first thing Jesus said that roll away the stone. Stone stands for limitation. Stone stands for hindrance. Stone stands for the things you are trusting God for and it looks like it, it's not going. Stone stands for barrier. The first thing that Jesus told them is that roll away the stone. I don't know the type and the kind of stone the devil has placed on your tomb and say that as for you, you are not coming out from that situation. I have a good news for you. I see God. I see angels. They have come and they are standing right before of your stone and they are rolling the stone away. I said they are rolling the stone away. The stone of disappointment. The stone of sickness. The stone of poverty. The stone of... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The stone of limitation is being rolled away. If you believe it, shout amen. Ah. He says, roll away the stone. When Jesus was buried because they didn't want Jesus to come out because Jesus had already told them that on the third day I will rise they placed a stone on in front of the tomb so that Jesus even when you wake up from the grave you cannot come out am I telling somebody in Lazarus' case, Jesus told them, roll away the stone. In Jesus' case, an angel was sent from heaven, my God, to roll away the stone. And not only roll away the stone, they sat on the stone. Some of you, the enemy is looking at you. And he said that in this situation, you are not coming out. I have a good news for you. I said, I have a good news for you. I've seen that every stone that was placed before you, every stone that was placed before your tomb, and they are saying that as for you, it is over. I have a good news for you. It is not over. I said, it is not over. I said, it is not over until the Lord says so. The stone was rolled away. And the Bible says that Jesus wept for the very first time. Jesus wept over Lazarus. Mom, it is okay to weep. It is okay. But you don't know that anytime you shed tears, Jesus collects your tears and put them in a bottle and present it before the Father. You don't know that sometimes your tears is your prayer request. Jesus looked up to heaven and he said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. 
Who told you that God does not hear your prayer? He gave thanks to the Lord for the situation. I'm not telling somebody. He did not complain about the situation. He did not mourn about the situation. He lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you for this situation. And I know that you hear me always. And even right now, you have heard me. Somebody here, the Lord has sent me to tell you. He has seen your tears. And he has heard your prayer. And he has dispersed angels to come on your behalf. If you believe it, shall I receive it? I thank you that you hear me. And that you hear me always. And he said, Father, because of these people, show yourself strong. Hear this. Some of you, people have written you off. People are saying that it's over with you. But I am here to prophesy that in their very eyes, I said in their very eyes, the Lord is about to shock them. The Lord is about to disappoint them. The Lord is about to let them see that the God that you serve is alive. Because of these people. Lazarus. Lazarus. Come forth. This morning. We are calling the situation by name. Why? Because anything that has a name has an ear. Lazarus. Lazarus. Come forth. I don't know. I'm speaking to somebody here. I don't know that which has been buried. But this morning, they are coming forth. I said they are coming forth. Who am I speaking to? They are coming forth. Your healing is coming forth. Your money is coming forth. Your miracle is coming forth. Your change is coming forth. Your destiny is coming forth. Somebody shout and receive it. Lazarus come forth. And the Bible said that he that is dead and bound was loose. And Lazarus can see Lazarus coming out of the tomb. And Jesus said, I did this to let my people know that it is a type of me that is going to happen right after this. Because in life, you cannot give what you don't have. So let me show you how I'm going to suffer, how I'm going to die, and how I'm going to resurrect. Lazarus came forth and he said, Loose him and let him go. This morning is a resurrection Sunday, but by the time you leave here, whatever has held you bound, you are going to be loose. I said, You are going to be loose. I said you are going to be loose. I said you are going to be loose. If you believe me, shout amen. Why did Jesus die and on the third day resurrected? I want to minister. So I want to go very quick. Why did he die and on the third day resurrected? Number one, write it. I'm giving you just three. It was a prophetic declaration made while he was teaching and preaching in the synagogue. 
John chapter 2 verse 19 to 22 it was a prophetic declaration when he was teaching and preaching in the synagogue let's do this quick Jesus answered and said unto them Jesus answered and said unto them destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up he says I am the temple of God don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and he says that you would destroy this temple and in three days in three days the temple you have destroyed will come back alive and when he said that they never understood that it was a prophetic declaration into Jesus' future the reason why he came on earth to come and die for humanity somebody shout amen continue what happened then said the Jews uh -huh. 40 and 6 years was his temple in building uh -huh. and will thou rear it up in 3 days uh -huh. but he spake of the temple of his body uh -huh. when therefore uh -huh. he was risen from the dead uh -huh. his disciples remembered that uh -huh. he had said this unto them uh -huh. and they believed the scriptures uh -huh. and the word which Jesus had said have you seen that when he rose from the grave the disciples remembered that he spoke that you would destroy this body and on the third day this body will be restored so they remembered the prophetic word he declared over his life before he went on the cross somebody shout hallelujah the foundation of Christianity is him coming from heaven to the earth and died for humanity but it was a prophetic declaration that he made while he was on earth that he would die they would destroy this body and on the third day this body will be restored I don't know what the enemy has taken from you I see a divine restoration I see a divine restoration I said I see a divine restoration coming upon your life if you believe it shout amen number two number two why did Jesus die and on the third day resurrected he did that to give us the keys that was once stolen from us by the devil Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 and Isaiah 22 from verse 22 I want to do this quick listen when Jesus came to die Jesus had to die to go and take some keys that was once stolen from us and restore those keys back to us you understand later when Adam fell in the garden those keys that were given to Adam to have dominion and control was taken from Adam was taken from us that's why the, de the devil was able to say that all power is given unto me. And whoever I will, I so give. And he told Jesus, bow to me and I will give you. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I will give it to you. Because at that time, those keys has been handed over to the devil when Adam fell in the garden of Eden. Am I talking to somebody? So Jesus had to die and go to hell, the Hades. And go and pick up the keys. Take the keys from the hands of the devil and restore the keys back to you. I'm not told you somebody. Somebody read Revelation. I am he that liveth. I am he that liveth. And was dead. And was dead. And behold, uh -huh. I am alive forevermore. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. And have the keys of hell uh -huh. and of death. Have the keys of hell and of what? Death. 
How did he got it? When he died and he went into the grave, there was a contention in the realms of the spirit that Jesus had to take the keys back from the devil, back from Hades, and present them back the keys to humanity. Ah. Isaiah 22 verse 22. Isaiah 22 verse 22. It says what? And the key of the house of David. And the keys of the house of David. Uh, will I lay upon his shoulder. Uh -huh. So he shall open. Uh -huh. And none shall shut. It says the keys. I went to fight and take it from the devil. I'm handing over the keys to you. That you will open a door and no man can shut it. Am I talking to somebody here? He says, Matthew 18, 18. He said that whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Am I talking to somebody? So he took the keys and hand over the keys to you. So that when you shut a door, no man can open and when you open a door, no man can shut. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? When you open a door, no man can close it because you have the master key. When a door is shut, when you have the master key, you can go and open it again. He gave you the keys. The keys of your future. The keys of your next level. The keys of your destiny. Every key you needed to succeed in this life. When he went into the grave, he took the keys of the kingdom and he did not take it to heaven. He handed over the keys to you. He handed over the keys to you. He handed over the keys to you. I said he handed over the keys to you. He handed over the keys to you. If you believe it, shout amen. Number three, and we are going to pray. He went and died and on the third day resurrected as a sign of God's great power that nothing is too difficult for God to achieve. Genesis 18 from verse 14. Nothing is too difficult. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. Have you seen that? Is anything too hard for the Lord? It's a question. If Jesus died and on the third day he rose from the grave, God is asking you, is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything that God has said that he cannot do it? Think about this. He was put in the grave for three days. He came out not because of anything. He came out because of you. Because of me. And he's asking, is anything too hard for the Lord? If the power, Bible said that the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the same power dwelleth in you. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Sometimes the enemy makes us feel that this is impossible. The enemy makes us feel that this can never.
never happen. But I have a good news for you. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. I said there is nothing too hard for the Lord. I said there is nothing too hard for the Lord. If God gave his only begotten son to you, is there anything too hard for the Lord? This afternoon, he is risen. And he sent me to tell you, he has sent me to tell you that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. The power that caused him to rise from the grave. If the same power is extended in you, is there anything too hard for the Lord? The God of your fathers, the God of your mothers, the God that said that I will send my son to come and die for humanity and on the third day my son will rise for the freedom and redemption of my people. He's saying this morning or this afternoon, is there anything too hard for me to do for you? What is it that you are trusting God for? What is it that you are believing God for? If Jesus is risen, I said, if Jesus is risen, even you, you are rising from that condition. Ah. You are rising up from that situation. You are rising up from every ashes. Because it's risen, you will arise. I said you will arise. I said you will arise. It doesn't matter how deep you are. I see you arising. You will arise. Because he is risen. Ladies and gentlemen. This afternoon. We are going to pray one prayer. After we enter into a time of worship. And we leave the rest of the Holy Spirit. But this is what I want you to understand. That his resurrection, his resurrection, his resurrection gave you so much power to be able to overcome every devices of the evil one. His resurrection has made it possible that there is nothing that will be too hard for you from today going from this day forward there is nothing that's going to be too hard for you number three his resurrection has given you the keys to open and to close has given you the keys to overcome situations and challenges of life Jesus did not go on the cross died and rose from the grave for nothing. He gave you the power to overcome every storm of life. And this afternoon I've come to tell us he's risen. If Jesus is risen, wherever you are, you are not going to stay there. You are coming up. I said you are coming up. You are rising to where he has prepared for you. We are going to pray this morning and you are going to ask the Lord every dead situation in my life if you have risen this morning let the resurrection power bring life into every dead situation in my life life. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Are you ready to pray that prayer? <laughs> Are you ready to pray that prayer? Because I see woman of God, dry bones are going to come alive. 
in this place. Dry bones are coming back to life because Jesus is risen. Please rise to your feet. <laughs> rise to your feet. What is it, ladies and gentlemen? That is dead in your life. It seems so impossible. There is no life in that situation. When you turn to the left, you turn to the right. There is no hope. This afternoon, as you pray, I see life, life coming out of that situation. If you believe it, shout amen. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Amen. Are you ready to pray? Amen. Get this. Something will happen in this place. Oh, hallelujah. I see some people are going to be to be elevated in this place the fire of God will fall in this place hallelujah open your heart it's a resurrection Sunday there are things that are dead the Lord said they will resurrect in this place visions are going to be resurrected ambitions are going to be resurrected there are things that are going to resurrect in this place. Lift up your two hands. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I pray. I pray. Any dead thing in my life. Any dead thing in my life. That needed to be resurrected. That needed to be resurrected. As I pray. As I pray. I declare. I declare. The resurrection power. The resurrection power. The resurrection power. The resurrection power. Fall on it right now. 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 Say I declare. I declare. As I pray. As I pray. I arise. I arise. I arise. I arise. From sickness, from sickness, I arise. I arise from poverty, from poverty, I arise. I arise. I arise. I arise. I arise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. I will not remain. I will not remain in that grave. In that grave. I will not remain. I will not remain in that condition. In that condition. As I pray. As I pray. I come out. I come out. I come out. I come out. Right. Right now, lift up your voice, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bata kapala ba, rapa kapade badi, da pata kabodo lebe kadi, da pata le po kapa, marba kade kade, la da bodo mata lebe, raka kala ko kapa lebe, raba pata kala ba, la sa pata da kapa da, pata kapa lebe kado, raba ba sa sa kade kada ba ba, rabe pa kapa lebe do rabe, lebe pa pata.
when you open up your mouth and you speak over it, life is going to come. Today is a resurrection Sunday. The power is in you. The power has been given to you. The keys has been handed over to you. That when you speak today over that situation, life is coming. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, Lord, I declare, I declare right now, right now, I prophesy, I prophesy over every death situation, over every death situation in my life, in my life, right now, right now, I declare, I declare, oh God, oh God, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, as I prophesy, as I prophesy, I see life, I see life coming over that situation, coming over that situation, I see life, I see life coming over that death situation, coming over that death situation, I declare, I declare, as I prophesy, as I prophesy, I see resurrection. I I see resurrection power. Resurrected. Resurrected. Any death situation. Any death situation. In my life. In my life. Right now. Right now. Lift up your voice. Father, in the name of Jesus. of Jesus I declare I declare this morning this morning any death situation any death situation in my life in my life right now right now I declare I declare come forth come forth come forth come forth come forth come forth in the name of Jesus listen 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 you are not just shouting don't be diplomatic about this Anything that has 
a name as an ear. They only hear what you say. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. You know the things you are dealing with. Even though you are smiling. But God has given you the power in your mouth to speak. When you speak today, you will see the manifestation of that. Whatever you are trusting God for, you have to call it forth. You have to call it forth. I said you have to call it forth. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. As I call. As I call. My destiny. My destiny. My life. My life. My future. My future. My money. My money. I declare. I declare. Right now. Right now. Come forth. Come forth. Healing. Healing. Come forth. Come forth. Money. Money. Come forth. Come forth. My life. My life. Come forth. Come forth. Restoration. Restoration. Come forth. Come forth. Favor. Favor. Come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Get it. Now lift up your hands. Close your eyes. Please close your eyes wherever you are. See Jesus risen and seated on the throne. See Jesus risen and seated on the throne. Right now, just concentrate. I see God, the Spirit of God, moving in this place, all over this place. Our God is an awesome. God who reigns from heaven above with me. So my power, Lord, I God, you are our son God. Our God. Just worship him. God who reigns from heaven above with me, so far and ever God is a awesome God. Everybody say.
The Lord says, your time of restoration has come. Because I see you've been through so much. For the past one year, you have been through so much. But when you look at your family, you said, no God, I cannot give up. God is saying that, tell my daughter, restoration has come. From today, everything that is dead, say the Lord, is coming back to life. Because in the realms of the spirit, I see you in a field. And in that field, it was so dry. But the next thing I saw is that dew, a dew from heaven has watered the ground and I see plants coming up. Plants coming up. And the Lord says that it is time for your restoration. From today, things are shifting on your behalf. From your family, from your life, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Restoration. Take it now. Receive it. It is done. Shadabaha. It is done. It is done. It is done. Ah. Ah. Charity, you are not okay. Get the microphone. You are not okay. Come. It is done. Thank you, Lord. You are not okay. I don't know what has happened this weekend. But God, it is done, yeah? It is done. It is done. God says, I should tell you. It looks like any time <laughs> something is about to manifest, there are things that will happen to take away that joy from you. I don't know what has happened, whether yesterday or today, but that thing has really affected you. It is not about what has happened. It is about where you are going. It is about what is ahead of you. I see you so down. Please don't cry. I see you so down. It took the hand of God for you to be here today. You ask God, God, why? Things keep on happening. I am tired. Mama, I see that charity was tempted to take some medicine and drink. Antidepressants medicine. That she's come out from a long time. The pressure is too much that she wants to take it back. Just for her not to lose her sanity. But I declare, today, let the peace of God, which passeth all human understanding, rest upon me. Oh God, I pray, let your daughter rise up from every ashes. From every grace, let your daughter rise up. I declare divine empowerment. Divine empowerment. Divine empowerment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Listen, if you are here and you are tempted to drink something, medicine 
which is not good for you because of what you are dealing with the Lord says to tell you don't do it he has a great plan for you the Lord is your strength Sarah the Lord says to tell you don't close the business don't he said don't stop it please don't come. don't stop it the Lord says tell my daughter I will go ahead of you and make that dream become a reality the Lord says the struggle in this company is going to be over I see dead situations coming back to life don't close it don't give up hold on hold on to that business life is coming out of that business life is coming out of that business my friend the woman you want to marry I see that there's going to be a lot of oppositions I see even some family friend of yours from your father's side they will want to oppose it but the Lord says to tell you I have gone ahead of you to make things work for you because it's not everyone that want to see you do well that woman in India will make you so happy that woman in India when you get married you will come with her to UK when she comes God will make her make your life easy because I see in the realm of the spirit the tension is going to be too much that you will decide to give up but the Lord says don't give up don't do you understand what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Don't give up. Don't give up. There's going to be a lot of tension. But the Lord said, don't give up. He will see you through. The money will be provided. When you, both of you come here, it's the beginning of your shift. Richmond, I see, I see in Ghana that project, the moment you start, oh my God, God says, I will give you speed. There's a business that 
has to start online. Online. Okay? And the Lord says, I am giving you the wisdom that through that business, money will come into your hands. He says, whether you have started it or you are going to start, start or if you have started, keep on seeing that that business become a reality. Is anything like that? Is anything like that? Online business. Sorry? You are doing it, but it's not yet. Carry on, start. Yeah, don't stop. Oh. Don't, it might not make sense now, but don't stop. Because through that, God is going to put so much in your hand. Hallelujah. Don't stop it. Forget about the obstacles. Don't stop it. God is going to put so much in your hand. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. as we partake of your body and your blood let the healing power of God the anointing that destroys you let it rest upon these emblems let somebody be healed let somebody be restored let somebody be touched let somebody be made whole. Thank you, oh God, by your blood and your body. Our lives will never be the same. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sheep you.
Lift up the body. Lift up the body. I read First Corinthians chapter eleven from verse twenty three. He says, for I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. These two 
in remembrance of me. Let's partake the body together. Lift up the blood. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat, this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let's partake it together. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We ask in the name of Jesus that even as we are partake of your body and your blood, let the healing power of God, let the restoration power of God, let the anointing, let the grace that heals and restores rest upon your people. Anyone that is trusting you for total recovery, Total restoration. Total healing. Lord, I declare. Touch them. And make them whole. Let the power that is in the blood. Bring a total deliverance. Total shift. A total change. In the lives of your people. May cancer be healed. Arthritis be healed. Eye condition be healed. Migraine be healed. Back pain be healed. Waist pain be healed. Knee pain be healed. Ankle be healed. Whatever the condition is, I declare total healing, total freedom, total restoration. You are made whole by the power that is in the name that is above every other name. Thank you, Lord, for healing us this morning. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Please take your seat.
Sunday that I want us to give a befitting offerings unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So please take your offering. Those of you that are giving on your phone, the account number is going to be on your screen. Those of you that are watching us live, the account number is going to be on your screen. Be a blessing. Be a blessing and that your life will never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Today is a special Sunday. Resurrection Sunday, so into this season, your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. I'm trusting God that this finances, this offering will resurrect your financial life. This offering will resurrect your financial life. I said this offering will resurrect your financial life. That everything you are struggling with financially May this offering today open that door for you. Father Lord, I thank you for the seed your people are sowing into this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, I ask you, by this seed, visit your people financially. Bring a total recovery and a total restoration to our finances. Those that are trusting you for a new contract, a new job, a new business, a new life, whatever they are trusting you for, by this seed, remember them. Open doors of opportunities for your people and may their lives never be the same. In Jesus' name, and somebody shout amen.
prodigal son Did the love forgive them But that's what Jesus did When I think of what he did for me Ain't where I used to be But he showed me my sin That's, that's what, what Jesus did So I'm going to tell it from the mountain Shout it from the room There is a video here every week to inspire you. Why don't you take a moment and share this message as it helps us reach others with the message of Jesus Christ. If you need any prayer or counsel, please do call us and we'll be there to be a blessing to you. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye. Bye.